This is Entertainment for Review, and today I'm going to be taking a look at American Wedding, the 2003 comedy. This is the third installment of the American Pie series, and in my opinion, while not the best of the series, a good continuation of these movies. Please be aware, if you have not seen this movie yet, that this review will be containing spoilers. So, this American Pie franchise follows these characters through various stages of their lives. In the first movie, they're finishing high school and going to prom, and they're all losing their virginities. In part two, they finish their first year of college, and they're having trouble figuring out how to transition further into adulthood and forming relationships. And in this movie, they have finished college, and it is on to the next step, which is one of them getting married. And that one is Jim. Jim is going to be getting married to Michelle, who he met in the first movie, and they got closer and became a couple in the second movie. Now, this movie does make a transition, and it is very different because this movie does focus in more on Jim than ever before. In the first two movies, each of the four main cast members, I feel like, had their own story and plot going on, and you can kind of follow them along the way, as we did in the review, to show that each one had their own problems, their own story, and their own contributions to the movie. And I feel like things were divided up pretty equally in the first movie. In the second movie, things did start to get a little more focused on Jim, but still everybody else had their contributions to make, and in in this movie, everybody else had the least contribution to make, and this movie just really focuses on Jim leading up to his wedding. We don't get a return of Oz in this movie. He's absent, but we don't ever get an explanation. I don't even think they reference why he's not in the movie. During the movie, however, there is a deleted scene that says that he is out of the country during the events of this movie. The other core cast members do return, but again, it's mainly featured on Jim. For example, Kevin is in this movie, but Kevin might as well not be in this movie because he's not featured at all. He doesn't really do anything to this movie or add much to the plot. He's serving as one of Jim's groomsmen, but he doesn't have a lot of lines throughout the whole movie. He does get his usual line of trying to give them their usual to the next step line. This time when he goes for it, they all cut him off abruptly and basically say they've had enough of that. And Finch and Stifler do return. And their rivalry is a minor other storyline going on, and probably the only other storyline going on is that they're both trying to compete for the affections of Michelle's sister, Cadence. And they both go about it in extreme different ways by trying to basically be each other. Stifler, to try to win her affections, tries to act more kind, sensitive, and cultured, and Finch adopts a persona called the Finchmeister and starts acting more like Stifler to try to get her to notice him. And by the end of this movie, it is Stifler who wins and ends up with Cadence. But as I said, this movie does mostly focus on Jim and his adventures along his way to getting married. After an awkward proposal, he says that they're not going to invite Stifler to the wedding, and Stifler shows up at their engagement party, and they have another awkward encounter where he meets Michelle's parents for the first time, and that does not go well. And the remainder of the movie is his adventures along the way of trying to get to this wedding, trying to get Michelle's parents to like him, trying to get everything set up to give Michelle the wedding that he feels that she deserves. And he ends up having to invite Stifler because he needs something from Stifler, and that's to be taught how to dance. And Jim goes through several other obstacles along the way. When he's trying to get to dinner with Michelle's parents, Stifler is secretly throwing a bachelor party, and there's a lot of embarrassment along the way there that they have to cover up. He fights to get Michelle the dress she wants, to get her the flowers she wants, to get her basically everything she wants to get to her wedding day, and a lot of things get wrecked. And in the end, they come to realize that all that's important is that they love each other, and everything else is secondary. Now, Stifler does get a lot of flack in this movie, but Stifler is the MVP of this movie in a lot of ways. For one thing, he may have been doing it to get an invitation to the wedding, but he also taught Jim how to dance, which was a skill that Jim needed in order, again, to give Michelle something that she really wanted to be part of her ideal wedding. Next, they went searching for the dress designer she wanted to get him to agree to make her her dress. Now, it might look like Stifler almost cost them this experience, but without Stifler, they might not have ever found the designer, as Stifler was the one who accidentally went into the gay bar where the dressmaker was because he was a man and they thought they were looking for a woman. But after they think Stifler's a jerk and they're trying to get them to leave, Stifler has the dance off, which ends up getting the maker to agree to make the dress. So they owe Stifler again there. And later, when Stifler thinks he's finally going to get together with Cadence, he does go into the kitchen, flip a bunch of switches, and accidentally kill all the flowers that were in the refrigeration unit. But, yet again, he pulls through, he goes and gets the florist to pull together, remake all the flowers, and uses his football team to get them there. And, at another unfortunate event, Stifler ends up sleeping with Jim's grandmother in a closet. And this might not be the best occurrence, but one thing it does do is put a big smile on her face at the wedding ceremony, where before that it had seemed like she was going to be pretty cranky because Michelle's not Jewish. And let's not mention, also earlier in the movie, Stifler literally ate shit to protect things going on with the wedding, although he was trying to hide the fact that he had accidentally let one of the dogs eat the wedding ring that he was carrying. So all in all, like I said, I feel like Stifler is the MVP of this movie.
Finch gets his moment at the end because he does, again, get a chance to hook up with Stifler's mother at the end of the movie. She ends up being in the wedding, and then they sneak off to her room. Only to be observed by the two MILF guys, whose role in these movies basically be to see pictures or see Stifler's mom and say MILF over and over again. They're one of the only other sets of returning characters, and they're there just to do that. For some reason, although they've never been portrayed as being particularly close to Jim or their group in this movie, they, in the beginning, say that they're going to be ushers at the wedding. And just to restate it, I think that they really wasted Kevin's reappearance in this movie because he's there, he's Jim's groomsman, but it doesn't have any really notable scenes other than being locked in the closet during the bachelor party scene. So while I do overall think this is a good movie and a funny movie and a good one in this series, that's where I think this movie loses a little bit. Again, I think that each character in the first two movies had their own plot, their own storyline, and their own thing you could follow, and you got to see their own development. This one, it's just all about Jim and Michelle and their wedding. And of course, we can never understate the contributions of Jim's dad. In the beginning, he brings Jim the engagement ring, which he had forgotten at home by mistake. He's always there to give Jim advice along the way. Even when he catches Jim in these very compromising, very awkward situations, he's just a good dad out there giving advice. And he gets the opportunity to serve that purpose for Michelle, giving her advice while she's having trouble writing her wedding vows. He's another character that is truly a MVP of the entire series, as he's been a constant and a very good one. Let's take a look at how this movie was received. On Rotten Tomatoes, this movie stays about equal to what the previous movie had done. A 53% score, which is a rotten score from critics on the tomato meter, and the audience score of 63%. And over on IMDb, this movie scores a 6.3 out of 10. For me, this is not my favorite movie in the series, and I feel like it declines a little bit from the first two. And I gave the first two an 8 out of 10 for each movie. This one I score a little bit lower at a 7 out of 10 but still a good comedy and enjoyable to watch. Please let me know your thoughts on American Wedding in the comment section below. Who's your favorite character? How do you think this movie compares to the first two movies in the franchise? Please uh, be sure to like this video and subscribe to the channel, and keep an eye out for my next video coming soon.